So let's look at the group structure that underlies Edwards curves and that makes Edwards curves so nice to work with. I want to introduce this group structure by an analogy. So let's first look at the group of points on a unit circle. This is all points that fulfill this equation. So if we have two points, for example P1 and P2, those can be represented with their coordinates. That's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate or with angles from the y-axis, right? The angle in radians, for example. So if we want to add two points, we have to add the angles here. And we can compute the y-value of a point with the cosine from this angle, as we have learned, and the x value with the sinus, the sine, sin of this angle. So can either work with x, y coordinates or with an angle to fully specify our points. So we want to add those two points since we want the group or the additive law. So we just add the angles and then we compute the new x and y value with the sin, uh, sinus and the cosine, with the sine and cosine. Um, so we can calculate it like that, or we can directly calculate it with the x and y values. We will always end up on this unit circle. So this is a nice addition formula. And what would be the neutral element? Well, the zero one element because. If I add the angle, which is zero, to something else, I'll get always to something else. So this is the neutral element. So then, if we want a group, we also need inverses. And what would be the inverses? Well, if I add this angle to this angle, then we would have a full circle again, and I would end up at the neutral element, right? Because this angle is equivalent to this angle. So inverses are mirrored on the x-axis, not on the y-axis, as with elliptic curves so far, but actually on the x-axis. And so much to our analogy, and now we're gonna look at Edwards curves in the next video.